One thing I don't advocate is keeping any meat from the inside of the gut cavity. And the reason that I don't is because most of these type of things would end up in trimmings and get ground into sausage. The contamination level and the bacteria count on the surface of the inside of the cavity, even if you didn't cut the guts, even if you did a great job gutting it, is about 10 times higher than it is on the outside. And so when you introduce that into your ground meat, you just have made a, a big impact on the flavor and the, and the keeping quality of the meat, and I just say don't do it. The only thing I will keep, and it's because they're for the most part protected by fat, is the tenderloins. And I'm going to take those out right now. I'll show you how I do that. We'll get that fat out of the way first. The tenderloins are good. They're not my favorite piece of meat on the deer, but one thing I do recommend with them is eat them right away. Don't freeze them, don't store them because, again, they're from the area that is hardest to control with contamination. So I'm going to go up here. You find the pelvic circle here, the pelvic channel. I'm going to go up here about halfway, cut across the top of the tenderloin, and then down on the side near the backbone. And just kind of take your time, loosen it up a little bit on this side, and now it'll pull out of there. Okay, so now we need to clean this up a little bit and there's a membrane over the top of this that we can get underneath. Now, I usually don't recommend washing any meat but on the tenderloins I do. I think it's a good idea to soak them in salt water for a couple hours. It'll get some of that blood discoloration to soften up and come out of there. That's the butcher's reward right there. If we had a frying pan in here this morning, we'd start them up for lunch. Again, halfway up around this circle here, cut across the head, down the backbone and then over on this side. Try to get that out of there. Okay. So, I've got this piece of flank meat, I'm going to get rid of that. I don't like the looks of that. And this one as well. So the next step we're going to do is to take out the back straps. consistent you got anywhere from a half to three quarters of an inch of fat over the saddle. The reason I'm doing this is then I can get pretty precise on where I'm cutting to get that back strap out of there. If you go in there blind and try to cut through the fat, every once in a while you'll cut in the wrong place and then be disappointed.
Okay, I got most of the tallow off of there. I'm going to save this tallow because we like to use it for feeding birds. It seems like venison tallow is, is really a nice hard fat and it, it works really good for that. So to take out our back straps, the first thing we're going to do is come up here and find our hip bone. And if you feel in here with your thumb, I'm going to get a little bit more of that out of there. The bottom of that hip bone is right there, right above my finger. And so if you come just underneath that, I located the hip bone right there with my thumb, and then I'm going just on a slight uphill underneath it, but slightly uphill on both sides. There it is again. Come right up there. Now we're going to cut down the backbone, and this is a good time to take your time. I'm only doing about an inch of my knife through that first layer. I'm trying to feel the bone along the side of my knife. And like I say, just go easy. This is the, the El Primo cut of meat on the deer, so you don't want to make a mistake and leave a lot of it hanging on the bone. When you start to hear the click click with the tip of your knife, then you know you're deep enough. You want to click click all the way down. Okay, and then you take your thumb and hold it away from the backbone and go one, one bone at a time. And then what happens oftentimes with an adult deer like this, you'll see it almost wants to pull away from the bone on its own. And when it does that, that tells you you're in for some awful good eating. It's going to be very tender. I know the idea of shooting does is still hard for some people to get their mind around it, but when it comes to table fare, it is just wonderful. You can see what's happening there, that meat just wanting to come off on its own. And the way we did that, we left almost nothing on the bone there. Don't be afraid to go a ways down into the neck because that, that goes a long ways down there. We're at the end of it. Okay. Go slow. This particular part here, speed has no value. We're going for yield. That's just what you want to see happen there. Okay. So once we get the back strap out, we're going to clean it up a little bit. We've got a a little bit of flank on this side here. And then on the head end up here, it's actually not part of the, the back strap, but that muscle is very tender and I like to leave it attached. But we do have this one tendon in here that's yellow in color. It's actually a ligament, not a tendon. And we definitely got to get that out of there. That will not break down when you cook it. Okay, so the normal way that I do this is I cut it in thirds. And this, I suppose we have to trim that up a little bit there. So I would have uh, one third there and one third there. And by leaving that head end on there, you'll get a more similar size piece. Now, you can go ahead and remove the silver skin on this and I'd recommend you do it. I don't usually do it until I defrost it, but 
you know that's personal preference you'll be happier if you take it off here's the other part of the the yellow ligament there okay get rid of that Third, a third, a third. I go through how I prepare these on the grill. Uh, I'll show you my method, which is almost foolproof to give you a medium to medium rare. And uh, one of the things I'll say about it is I'm looking at this meat and just salivating over it because I know how good it's going to be. And, and I know it for two reasons. Number one, the deer was nice and fat and it was a, a doe. But also, I'm confident in the method that we use to cut it up and get the skin off of it. And that we don't have any foreign flavors, any wild flavors uh, in the product. It's my opinion that when people talk about the gamey taste of meat, most of it is coming from contamination. There's examples where that's not true, obviously, with a real ruddy buck or a deer from you know, Northwoods country where all they eat is browse and pines. But for our farm country deer, there is no such thing as gamey f flavor if you prepare it right. And it's really a responsibility for everybody who's going out there to harvest the deer. Yeah, I like a big buck the same as anybody else. I like to admire the antlers and stuff. But if you're going to harvest the deer, put this food on your table. It's the best food that you can get. I would prefer a piece of backstrap like this to a hundred dollar steak in a restaurant. And uh, my wife is the same way and she didn't start out that way, I can tell you that. But uh, study your lessons and do it right. Do it the clean way, the right way, you'll be much happier. Uh, in our hunting group, which is an extended family group of about 35 guys, we've gone 100% to copper bullets. And the reason we did it was some of the research that showed how many lead fragments end up in very small uh, pieces in your meat. And one of the things about the copper is they stay intact, they open up like a flower. And we found a number of these, you know, that are evidence that the copper bullet is the way to go.